near mint condition, the home of collected oh, edition. That cover is so awesome. Absolute format is the best way to own this store. Time to empty those wallets and fill those shelves. How's it going, all you minties? This is the Uncanny Omar from Nearman Condition. And thank you all for reminding me that I haven't done an overview of this omnibus. I've had it upstairs since December, and one of you on my Saturday live stream reminded me that, hey, are you ever going to do an overview of Spy vs. Spy? Yes, I guess I am. Today! So, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so what we're looking at here is a very unique omnibus. And I don't mean just in the size and dimensions, but I also mean like the way it's designed, the content that's collected in here. So let's go back to what I just said, size and dimensions. This, even though it's labeled as an omnibus published by DC Comics, well, it's a lot bigger than your regular omnibus. Here it is, for example, right next to a Marvel Omnibus, which is the size of a DC Omnibus. As you can tell, it's taller and longer than that Marvel Omnibus. Honestly, it feels closer to the dimensions, yet it's still bigger than those Black Label magazine-sized books, because these were originally printed in the Mad Magazine. But this is what it looks like next to one of those Black Label books. But let's shift the focus back to this. Let's check out this cover. Spy vs. Spy Omnibus. So here are the two gentlemen that play a big part in these comic strips. By Antonio Projillas. Now, it's collecting everything he did. Because he is the creator of Spy vs. Spy. All the way until he left Mad Magazine. Retired and unfortunately passed away in 1998. Now, there has been other people that have worked on Spy vs. Spy. And you're going to see some of that stuff in here, but as far as being complete Spy vs. Spy, not really. This is just complete for everything that Antonio worked on. Mad Magazine and what looks to be Morse code. I assume that says Spy vs. Spy, or maybe it says Antonio Proyas. No DC logo anywhere. Spy vs. Spy logo, again, black and white, and a little bit of gray right there. Omnibus and Mad Magazine. And the back of the book, 50 Years of Inspired Lunacy, and Mad Magazine logo down there, the DC logo down there, the ISBN, 75 USA, cheap, like the old Mad Magazine gag, and just like the old Mad Magazine gag, 99 Canada, cheap, eh, question mark. So it does have a dust jacket. Here is what the flaps look like, 50 Years of Inspired Lunacy also featured, and about the author, and then the first Spy vs. Spy strip by Antonio Proyas from Mad Number no. 60, January 1961. Now, underneath the dust jacket, it seems like something that they've used in the past with this embossed image of one spy against the other spy, right here, and embossed Spy vs. Spy, Omnibus, Mad Magazine has like this faux leather look. Now we're going to be cracking this open and checking out exactly what is in this particular omnibus. I don't have the original 2011 printing, so I don't have the book to compare it to. Um, but let's go ahead and get started with that. All right, let's go ahead and crack this open. Your end sheets here showing some gags of Spy versus Spy. Oh my gosh, that is so beautiful. That's his art table. Spy vs. Spy Omnibus title page, Antonio Proyas, Mad Logo, and then a picture of him here. Oh, wait. It does say right here, the Morse code that appears on each Spy vs. Spy strip spells by Proyas. Okay, so sort of right. It is him. It's his name. That's cool. January 17th, 1921 to February 24th, 1998. Uh, there is a forward here by John Ficara. And then there's acknowledgments here by Charles uh, Cochran. And you also get a really in-depth introduction here uh, from Grant Gaisman. And just telling you the history of this man that left Cuba to come to the United States, left Cuba 
while Fidel was down there. And he goes into the history of him being a political cartoonist down there and the difference in being a political cartoonist here in America and down in Cuba when that was going on. Coming to America and then taking a job with Mad Magazine. And ironically enough, getting to write stories about something that he was accused of being, which is a spy. And this book collects 400 pages and again, retailing for $75. A cartoonist in times of revolution and censorship right here. And that's by Fab Fabiolo Santiago, Snapshots of My Father. So right off the bat, this is a different type of omnibus that you're probably used to from DC, from any of their Batman or Superman, whether it's even Golden Age or Silver Age or Modern Age. It just feels different. Honestly, it kind of reminds me, probably because I just read some of those PRH Marvel books with a bit of a forward, a bit of an acknowledgement, a bit of an introduction, or anything done by Fanagraphics, or anytime there's a Mobius book, like the one that's uh, published by Dark Horse Comics, you get a history, because history has a lot of impact on these wonderful creators. So this is nice. I like reading stuff like this. Um, I know whenever I was doing my Conan Omnis overviews, one of my favorite things to do was talk about how much I loved the forward by Roy Thomas. And I remember somebody, I can't remember who it was, but in one particular volume of a video, they said, oh my gosh, if I wanted to read that stuff, I would have gotten a book. Yes, that's that's true. You would have gotten a book. Uh, but I don't know. There's just a certain beauty to finding out the stories behind the stories to me. And it's not for everybody. And you can honestly skip it and get right to the comic strips when he started printing things over at Mad Magazine. But if you want to find out more about the man and why he left Cuba, this has a wonderful introduction in history behind that. A lot of back matter too. La Mujer Sinestra por Proyas. So the sinister woman, El Hombre Sinestro, the sinister man right here. And this kind of gives you an idea of what we're going to be looking at here. And what we're going to be looking at here are textless comics. So they don't have any words. There's no dialogue. There's no narration boxes. It's just following the pictures. And following the pictures of a spy dressed in white and a spy dressed in black and trying to outwit each other and trying to kill each other. Sometimes the white spy wins. Sometimes the black spy wins. Sometimes it's spy versus spy versus spy. And that was some of my favorite comic strips. Sometimes they get distracted by a luscious looking woman. And sometimes both of them end up killing each other. Sometimes nobody dies. Sometimes they just sit down for a cup of coffee. But these are the stories that for me remind me of my fourth grade and fifth grade year. And going over to my friend John and Jason's house, and they were all about Mad Magazine. I had a few Mad Magazines. I, I, was, more, I was more in the comics than Mad Magazine. Um, but they were like, look, man, sometimes they, they, they sneak in a booby here or there like a nipple. <laughs> hey, for a fourth and fifth grader, before the internet, that was a big deal. That was close to the scrambled Cinemax. Anyway, when it rained. Um, what the hell was I saying? Oh, yes. So they would be big into these kind of things. And then they showed me like the little uh, collected editions, like the little digest size books of these collections. And I ended up buying some of like the Scholastic Fair. It's where I bought some of these Spy vs. Spies because I wanted to get them. I, I, I love the idea of just these textless stories. And I remember when they gave me the collection, I'm like, you guys are practically reading comics. Why aren't you trying out comics? They were like, oh, man. Comics just have too many words, and there's no real gag in them. We don't even know why they're called comics, so I have to give them, like, the history of comics. Now, one of the things you're going to notice here is that the artwork is going to evolve. You're going to see the gags getting more and more clever, but also get bigger as he gets bigger pages now on Mad Magazine. So... Towards the beginning here, when Spy vs. Spy first started out with the first strip. So let's go back here. You get the joke and dagger department right here. Talking about Antonio Proyas uh, being a famous Cuban artist whose anti-Castro cartoons have appeared in such publications and telling you what he's done. And then you get the, the actual comic strip. Uh, you get a little message 
before each one from the joke and dagger department the titles are different for each of the comic strips but then i guess mad saw that there was such a popularity and demand for more and more spy versus spy that they decided to expand and kind of blow up the title a little bit bigger getting rid of the joke and dagger department introduction and making the title bigger and the artwork bigger too and it's just really cool to see that uh, to see just multiple panels being used so not just using the standard six panel grids but moving on to more and more panels and getting creative uh, because mad magazine one of my favorite things about mad was that the space was never wasted like you could tell when an artist was like okay there's way too much white space here let's just draw little figures up here of the same ongoing joke that happened in like a previous page and it's just like the aftermath of something i love those kind of things almost felt like a flip book and you are gonna see some of that through here like not the main gag being the entire gag of spy versus spy but also what's going on behind in the background there are characters that there are jokes in there that you may not have noticed i like that about going back and reading these i had this damn book upstairs uh because i got it right around christmas so this came in in december i got it right around christmas time and it was just one of my oh i'm gonna go and read some okay, so, yes you know what the hell with it yes i'm gonna go read some spy versus spy because it does require reading um but I forgot because I was reading it for fun that I hadn't done a video yet until somebody reminded me last Saturday. So you are going to see some articles in here, some introductions uh, from fellow fellow collaborators at Mad Magazine and just people with the fond memories of how much they respected him and how great of a human being he was, not just his cartoons. And when you have titans like Sergio Aragones praising you and you've worked along with people like Angelo Torres or Jack Davis or Don Martin, Jack Richard, uh, Mort Drucker, oh my gosh, uh, Paul Cocker Jr., my goodness, there's just so much talent that came out of Mad Magazine. Now, if you're wondering why this wasn't published by dark horse comics because dark horse has the license to ec ec published of course shock and suspense stories the frontline combat the vault of horror the tales from the crypt but they also published mad magazine well just like most licenses they get split up and mad magazine got bought by dc comics so that's why this was not published by dark horse because I'm pretty sure, you know, we would have had collections like this. I really hope this reprint sells well enough so we can get other collections of Mad Magazine. Like, whether it's artist-centric or just collections of different strips that they've had over the years. I would love for that on my bookshelf. This brings back a lot of memories. And I, the older I, I... I'm 45 now and I appreciate the art looking like this big these days instead of... You know a small digest size book so i mentioned earlier that the titles get smaller and smaller because he just kept evolving as an artist and there were just more panels he wanted to use the other thing i didn't mention is that at the very bottom of each of these strips you'll see when it was originally printed so this is like mad 245 from march 1984. so the first one of course being in 1961 spy versus spy that we saw earlier right here mad number 60 january 1961 so the year and the issue number are all the way at the bottom until he left in the late 90s and retired and unfortunately passed away in 1998 the back has some extra stories um it's got some extra things that he did for mad magazine that aren't spy versus spy uh, there are some covers for Mad Magazine that did feature Spy versus uh, versus Spy, and then some colored. My goodness, uh, what is this Prisma color? Doesn't look like watercolors, but doesn't look like crayons. It looks awesome. So you do have some colored stuff back here, the White Castle ad, and of course there's the Mad Magazine covers the different translations over seas the video games the bookends the trading cards 
There were two video. Dude, I only remember one Spy versus Spy video game. On the game. Oh, it was the Game Boy Color had another one. I don't remember that one. This is the Spy vs. Spy special. And these... Oh my gosh, that is so freaking cool. And it's in color. And this is from the Spy vs. Spy special that was printed in 2011. This is a piece right here by Jim Lee. That's... I'm surprised no better, nobody ever took that idea and ran with it. And then the 50th anniversary project. This is an interview with Jessica Proyas, his granddaughter, talking about him. And my favorite thing that I got out of this interview was that Antonio was a big fan of Guayaberas. And Guayaberas are these shirts, these button-up shirts. My dad is a big fan. He still wears them, still gives them to me. When he, go, when he went to Peru the last time, he bought me some. And I was like, it's it's like a button up dress shirt with short sleeves. It's pretty pimp, I gotta say. And I'm a, I love the fact that Antonio was also a fan. This again is his desk, and is the same end sheets that are at the front. Now, let's look at the binding. 400 pages. It is sewn binding, and it is printed in this glossy paper stock. Um, it doesn't feel like the glossy paper stock they've used for uh, the older Omnis. It feels kind of like the paper stock they've used for like the Batman and Robin Eternal. Not quite as thick as it used to be, but still thick. Um, but yeah, that's it. It's brought back a lot of memories. That, as they say, is that. If you're interested in purchasing this omnibus, don't forget to check out our sponsors. If you're in Europe and you're interested in buying these books, definitely check out Walt's Comic Shop in Berlin, Germany. They have the cheapest pre-order prices, flat shipping rate of 12 euros for all EU countries, emails answer within 24 hours, waltzcomicshop.com, and you can use the code near mint condition at checkout and get free shipping for all EU countries with your first order over 40 euros. That's Walt's Comic Shop, your reliable source for Omnis and premium collected editions in Europe. Ding! CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online home for graphic novels and collected editions up to 50% off cover price. They have excellent shipping and prompt and helpful service. Check out their bargain deals for up to 90% off cover price. And don't forget that CGN also takes pre-orders. That way you don't miss out on the hottest releases. And they are currently running a special promotion for you Minties. If you're a first time customer, after receiving your order confirmation email, reply back to that email and let them know Near Mint Condition sent you their way. They will then apply a free shipping promotional credit to your next order in the US. Cheap Graphic Novels, your source for the hottest books with a kind of deep discount, quality shipping, and customer service that will keep you coming back for more. And that was the content, the page count, and build of this book. Let me know in the comments down below if you are picking this up. If you have fond memories of Mad Magazine, what was your favorite Mad Magazine gag or your favorite strip? And if you have fond memories of Spy vs. Spy, whether the original comic strips or the little booklets like the collections that you would find at libraries or Scholastic Fair. Gosh, I love and miss those days. Um, or... If you found out about Spy vs. Spy from Mad TV or the video games. Regardless, leave those memories down below. Smash that like button on the way out. Check out our Patreon and Spreadshop. Amazing ways to support the channel if you can do so. Everyone stay healthy and safe out there. Much love.